In this video, we'll talk about distance between two points, the midpoint between two points, and then we'll talk about circles. So I have an example here. I have the point negative 1, comma, negative 2, and the point 3, comma, 4. Plot it on the x-y coordinate plane. And we'll find the distance between those two points. Yeah, there's a formula here, but I think it's important to know how this formula emerged. All right? Where did it come from? It comes from Pythagorean theorem. So we're trying to find the distance between that point and that point. This actual distance here. Can we form a right triangle? Yeah, just go like this. Boop, stop there. Go up. Boop. Everyone, Pythagorean theorem deals with right triangles. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So, if we call this side A and this side B, because we must call the hypotenuse C opposite that 90 degrees, well then the distance between this, uh, these two points, which is C, all right, is reflected in that equation. But, we want C, the distance, not C squared, so we'd have to take the square root of A squared plus B squared, all right? And compare this. A squared plus B squared, big square root. Look, there's your A squared, there's your B squared. Because A is the distance between the two x values, all right? And yeah, you go, which way should I subtract? You're going to square that guy, so it doesn't matter. So this is your change in x. This is your change in y. And that's where that's coming from. Okay? Yeah, you can, you can call this formula square root of change in x squared plus change in y squared. All right. So it comes from Pythagorean theorem. Now we see that. Let's find the distance between these two points. All right. Uh, doesn't matter which one we call x1. Let's call this one x sub 1. Well, if we do that, then this coordinate here is y sub 1. And that would make this x sub 2 and y sub 2. When I find the distance between two points, there we go. 3 minus negative 1 squared plus 4 minus negative 2 squared. 3 minus negative 1 is 4. And then we'll square it. 4 minus negative 2 is a positive 6. And we'll square it. And we start to do everything on this radical. So that's the square root of 16 plus 36, which is the square root of 52. And if you want to simplify that radical, that's 2 squared of 13. If you want to approximate it, everyone, the square root of 49 is a perfect 7. So we're going to square root of 52 is a little bit more than 7. It's roughly about 7.2 or so. That's the distance between those two points. Now let's find the middle point, which would be somewhere in the middle of this segment here. It's the average of the x's times the average of the y's. Yeah, x of 1 plus x of 2 over 2 and y sub 1 plus y sub 2 over 2. But another way to read this midpoint all right, coordinate, it's the average of the x's times the average of the y's. So let's find that. What is negative 1 plus 3? I'm just adding the two x values divided by 2. Negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2, we get 2 over 2, 2 over 2, which is the coordinate 1 comma 1. That's the midpoint. And let's check our work. There's 1 comma 1. Does that seem to be the midpoint? It sure does. Alright. So that's distance and midpoint. Um, lastly, let's talk about circles, all right? Are circles functions? No. Don't fail the vertical line test, correct? So, let's talk about a common circle equation that's centered right at the origin with a certain radius. Let me put circles here. That'd be something like this. X squared plus y squared equal to 9. 
This is an example of a common circle centered right at the origin. It has a radius. It's a circle. It has a radius, a distance from the center to an edge. The radius is not 9. The radius is the square root of that number. So in this particular circle, the radius of the circle will equal the square root of 9, which is 3. So yes, yeah, so I guess you can call a circle equation similar to this is x squared plus y squared equal to r squared. r squared, where the radius is the letter r. We can sketch this too. Go over a 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. I'll just connect these points. No, it's not perfect, but it gives you a basic sense of what the circle looks like. Alright, there's a sketch of the skirt, circle, excuse me, rough sketch. Now, not a function, fails the vertical line test. But a lot of times we talk about the semicircles, which are involved here. You got a top semicircle, and then you got a bottom semicircle. And to find the equations of these semicircles, we just have to solve for y. So what I'm going to do here is subtract x squared on both sides. Subtract x squared, subtract x squared, I'd isolate the y squared. Then I'll take the square root of this. Alright? That's the top semicircle. That's the equation of the top semicircle drawn in blue. But what about that bottom semicircle? Well, in mathematics, if you ever take the square root of both sides of an equation, you must put a plus or a minus from that square root. So actually, this bottom semicircle is the equation y equal to negative square root of 9 minus x squared. Let me take that out there. Top semicircle, well, there's your bottom one. There's your bottom semicircle. Okay? And surely, if you have a graphing calculator, you type this equation into the uh, y equals, you type this one also, and you hit graph, it will form each of the two functions, these are both functions here, separately to form the circle. Okay? So, uh, but circles can shift. Circles can shift. So if this is your common circle, centered at the origin. Uh, what if it shifted somewhere? So I'm going to make up an example. Let's see. How about x plus 1 squared plus y minus 2 squared equals 9. All right. What's the radius of the circle? Is it 9? No. That's r squared. Radius squared equals 9. So the radius is the square root of 9, which is 3. Why didn't I put a plus or minus there? Because the radius is a distance, must be positive. So the radius is the perfect 3. Alright, where will be the center of this circle though? Since it shifted, transformed, the center of that circle is not the origin anymore. But it deals with this 1 and the negative 2 somehow. Okay? What it did, the center shifted. And the center will now be located from the x and y coordinate for the center. Negative 1 here. And see how that's y minus 2? It will be located 2. Look carefully how this number would make this expression right here turn into 0. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. And a 2 plugged in here for y, 2 minus 2 would equal 0. This is now the center of this circle. Alright? So to keep it simple, I guess you can look at that sign right there. It's a plus. This is going to be negative. That's a subtraction sign right there. That's going to be a positive. Yeah. And the radius will be 3. Let's make a sketch of this. Alright. The center is now located. I'll use blue. Negative 1, 2. That would be right there. The radius is 3, so from this blue dot, I'll go 1, 2, 3 notches to the left, to the right, excuse me, 
one, two, three notches to the left, a one, two, three notches up, one, two, three notches down, a rough sketch of our circle. Not perfect, just a rough sketch. Okay? So when circles get a little more complicated and they do shift from that origin, as you see in this example, it's not that bad. Alright? Except this won't be located at 1, comma, negative 2. Look where the center now is, as we discussed earlier in transformations. That's it.